Before July 20th, 1999, Falun Gong was an ordinary part of Chinese society. On that day, the lives of one-fifth of the world's people changed forever. In the West, we think of China as a bit of a police state and so on, but you know, we, we don't really imagine what it's like when that police state uses its muscles in full force. And that's what it was like with Falun Gong. But why did the government go after Falun Gong? Why would a single Qigong practice deserve so much attention? They don't depend on state subsidies. They don't depend on state tolerance. It's like the people doing things. And in the face of torture and death, why would so many people refuse to give it up? This program attempts to answer the question, what is Falun Gong? And why is Falun Gong important for China? Throughout my life, I felt that everywhere I found myself was just not quite right for me. I had been seeking something, but now I had finally found it. I felt I had come home. century China is defined by change. Before the communists came to power in 1949, China had already gone through revolution, civil war, and occupation by the Japanese. After the communists came to power, China went through numerous political campaigns that resulted in tens of millions of unnatural deaths. The most well-known is the so-called Great Cultural Revolution, when even people who didn't consider themselves political were butchered on the streets. Fear reigned, and the whole country was in the grip of Mao's personality cults. The Cultural Revolution started to affect me when I was nine years old. My father was persecuted and sent to a labor camp. So my family was separated and we couldn't stay in our home anymore. We went to my mother's school, which was very cold. I developed rheumatoid arthritis, and it's followed me through my whole life. I tried lots of different types of medicine, both Western and Chinese. Li Wei Shun was born in northeast China's Shenyang city. A wife, mother, and former Communist Party member, she now lives with her son in New York. She found that slow-moving Qigong exercises helped relieve her arthritis pain and that they worked better than the Chinese medicine she was taking. In 1996, she learned Falun Gong at a park in Shenyang. My parents didn't know much about Buddhism, and I'd never learned about it because the party had always brainwashed us with atheism. After I began practicing Falun Dafa, or Falun Gong, and started living by the principles of truth, compassion, and tolerance, and doing the five exercises, I changed completely, just like in the Chinese saying, overturning heaven and earth. Out of the ashes of the Cultural Revolution, a new China emerged. Business-minded reformers rose to power, and a new period began known as the economic reform and opening up to the West. Some people who were persecuted in the Cultural Revolution were reinstated. But there was almost no attempt to prosecute the crimes of the Cultural Revolution, or to heal the scars it left on the people who lived through it. I mean, this is a country with you know, approximately a third of the people 
have gone through the Cultural Revolution. Uh, and were made to do terrible things during the Cultural Revolution. They simply can't talk about it. There's no ability uh, to, to air this. It's not going to happen. The minute you start opening that kind of thing up, you're going to set off a chain reaction, a sort of terrible chain reaction. That's the, that's the fear of the Chinese leadership. In 1989, the spirit of reform died along with thousands of protesters in the Tiananmen Square massacre. The massacre was another turning point for China. Some of the leaders of the economic reforms were ousted, and those who supported the massacre, including Li Peng and Zhang Zemin, ascended to the throne of the Communist Party. It was the same year that Li Hongzhi began teaching Falun Gong. Ten years later, Zhang and Falun Gong would cross paths. 10,000 Falun Gong practitioners would gather outside the central government compound in Beijing. Zhang would act, and the persecution would begin. He uh, single-handedly ordered the persecution on July 20th. The Cultural Revolution ended with the death of Mao in 1976. Over the next 10 years, economic reforms in the CCP would open the country to foreign investment and trade. Doing business was the new revolution. As the saying went, to get rich is glorious. I was working in exporting, so I saw who was really making money from exports. It was those children of senior officials. These were the people who really made money. Zhou so Yuyun is from the southern Chinese city of Guangzhou now one of the wealthiest cities in China. She learned Falun Gong in 1998. On that day, after I finished a meal at a restaurant, I went out for a walk around the south gate of the Guangzhou Zoo. That's when I saw a bunch of people practicing Falun Gong. I thought it was interesting and that their movements were very graceful, so I walked up to have a closer look. I saw a sign next to them explaining Falun Gong. After I read it, a person next to me began explaining what it was. Falun Gong started really and spread in the parks, uh, in, in practice uh, sessions that were taking place in public view uh, outside. Okay, it was like the people doing things. Qigong became popular in the 80s and 90s when China was opening up to the West. Based on traditional Chinese practices, Qigong was a relic of China's traditional spiritual culture. There was a practical side as well. China ended fully subsidized health care in the early 90s. There were many stories of Qigong practitioners recovering from illnesses, and many people turned to Qigong out of desperation. 